Hey everybody, it's Henry Harrison. Uh, thank you for coming back for another week of astrology. Um, we're going to take a look at the week of astrology for June 6th, Sunday, through June 13th, Sunday. Um, I'm going to do a little bit differently today in that we're going to mostly look at the aspects and we're going to um, look at the transits of the planets to the annual revolutionary chart, um, the solar return chart of the spring equinox. Uh, in general, transits to that chart because that chart is still the one that is determining um, the mundane manifestations for um, all areas of the world, seeing that we have not passed into the summer solstice yet and there are a few interesting indications um, we're gonna just basically look over some key words for those as well um, while we look over the um, ordinary transiting astrology okay so so you know um, I am choosing to film this around this time yes around here um, I don't have a particularly good transit to my chart for Mercury um, the moon is applying the sextile out of sign to or from a wide orb to Mercury retrograde in Gemini um, and we also have the hour of Mars, who's ruling the moon, so perhaps not the best election, but given the circumstance, it's um not terrible, so we're just going to mostly go through it. Okay. And we did talk a good bit about uh, June 5th, Saturday. Um... Uh, you know, mostly what we talked about before is that it, it will be a um, confrontational situation at times throughout the day, and um, the way we're interfacing has um, this Neptune sort of filter or environment that it's passing through, giving it a um, very wide scope in a way. Um, for what we can encounter as we interface. Um, so, when these planets are angular, like we talked about with the moon at the T-square, um, we can expect um, breakdowns in... Um, mm, relationship, breakdowns in relationship, essentially... Um, and that will be the energy the moon is left with as he leaves Aries, unfortunately. Uh, just not a very pain, not a very comfortable situation until Sunday morning, but as we spoke about with Sunday morning, um, you know, the moon will be in Taurus by um, after midnight and connecting to a good benefic aspect to Jupiter and to Venus. So very um, mild and peaceful in the morning as the moon moves in between the um, trine that Venus and Jupiter are making and also connects to Mercury of the year. Could be interesting. Um, it is good that we have some kind of connection to Mercury for the mundane context. But we also have here that mm, Pluto retrograde has moved back to the place where he was on March 20th for the spring equinox. And what that means exactly, I'm not entirely sure, but it is interesting that the Pluto is returning back to and passing the place that they were at the time that defines the mundane context, right? So Pluto 
expressions could become much more intense and serious at this time. Um, you know, um, the intensity that Pluto can represent could reach an extreme, but in a hidden way, you know, it's just connecting into the whatever Pluto means in the mundane, right? The, the current Pluto is very much connected to the mundane. All right, so as we get into the evening, it could become more restricted, less, um, more um, coming up against a sort of restriction with the mundane, but also being able to break through it, or vice versa, really. But um, by the morning of June 7th, right after midnight, as the moon is applying the conjunction to Uranus and to Saturn, um, we have this aspect of sun conjunct moon. So the sun has reached the place where he was, or where the moon was at the time of the revolution, right? Take a look at that. You see that, uh, 16 degrees, 41 minutes. Mm -hmm. The sun is there, where the moon was. And if this was for a person, um, it would be a personal, domestic, emotion, emotional life, um, bringing them to prominence. Um, the symbolic energy of the solar is in our emotions. Bringing out our unconscious attitudes. Um, a good day to examine what comes up. And, you know, the moon energy is coming into this um, eclipse process. So we're really able to tap into the sun and the moon energy on a very fundamental level um, around, you know, the very a.m. of Monday morning. This could be like a new moon for the whole Monday in context. It might feel very refreshing, um, liberating, but coming up against a restriction at this time. Um, by the actual morning time, you know, in general, it will be a pleasant day for communication, thinking, intellectual exchange, lightheartedness, good times, a good time to confess your love to another person, a good time to air negative feelings, something that's been bothering you, a good time to go for a drive to begin a vacation for a person, right? A good time to relax. So I mean this day will probably be um, pretty mild after it kind of gets real cold in the morning. That's really the most of it and probably it will come into a dreamy sort of experience with Neptune by the end of the day. So let's take a look at that. And connect to Pluto. So the moon leaves the contact to Uranus and Saturn and moves into the Uranus-Pluto contact, which is more mild and easy in general. But you know, the theme switch is there. Um, all right. rather dreamy by Monday night um, and then connected to a sort of power situation um, a situation of how people are connected to their drive the way that we use the way that we consume things to get where we're going in a way um, you know uh, since we've had these contacts of Pluto and then Mars like this, or vice versa on the other side. You know, there is there is a power situation and um, like a cutting, a reaping that will happen around this time. 
before the moon goes into Gemini. And the moon will go into Gemini on Tuesday afternoon. And um, all day apply the square to Jupiter and Pisces, right? Okay, so we have an opportunity to change the way we're seeing the details, really. Um, if Gemini is the details, the street level, um, writing, uh, communicating, Jupiter is there, um, making an overcoming square from Pisces is domicile. I believe that we will have an opportunity to manifest a new detail. Um, new facts are being expanded in. New detailed um, work is manifesting at this time. Um, Mercury here is moving still very slow from the square to Neptune into the Sun. What else does that look like here? All right. That seems to be the main thing. You know, Jupiter in Pisces is expanding um, from his place. These um, details it could be too much details, too much information manifesting, you know, has its own set of problems, right? So on the mundane level, Mars trying Venus. It symbolizes the perfect balance between your need to be yourself and your need to relate to another. I haven't mentioned it, but I am reading from Robert Hand's Planets in Transit to get these keyword ideas for the mundane transits. Um, but to continue with this, um, a very physical love, um, not as much romantic, but very gratifying. Um, it will stimulate a sexual relationship, um, for better or worse. So, I mean, there could be an opportunity to exercise discretion. Um, since, even since there is going to be so much energy in this um, area of the chart, with Gemini here and Jupiter really <clears throat> pouring a lot of his energy into it. Um, better to be discreet, to use it as a creative stimulus, I believe. But it is a lot of energy being available for <clears throat> creative work. Um, <clears throat> harmony of the sexes on the very mundane level um, will be emphasized at this time. So we get into Wednesday. The moon is still in Gemini, applying to the North Node, moving through these aspects to the mundane. Venus is making the sextile to Uranus in the mundane, which she's making on the, um, well, she's applying very closely to that aspect in the transiting this week as well by the end of the week. Um, Mercury retrograde will square where Neptune was during that revolution. Um, in the actual transiting astrology, the moon is making the trine to Saturn retrograde, intensified Saturn, and the moon will make the lunar return to that chart by the end of the day. So it is many different moods and manifest circumstances all coming together here. Uh, we'll begin with Venus sextile Uranus, so the transit to the mundane chart. And, you know, the difference is that it may be less about a new active process that's being created, but, you know, 
relating what's happening now to um, what Uranus would mean in the context of the the world as it is, really. The way it underpins um, the world as we live in it. You know, this just says fascinating influence, um, a different side of your personality, just winning and attractive, maybe brief relationships, but instantly agreeable, not a permanent attachment at this time, uh, a fling with friends, a party, an unstructured relationship possibility or I was thinking about it you know this whole Venus Uranus sextile will, will emphasize a um, a technological connection with Venus an easy way for Venus energy to interface with the world of technology as it stands less the technology itself but what it can afford is very much emphasized. All right, so another aspect we had to the mundane was Mercury retrograde trying Jupiter, and this one's particularly interesting. Let's um go back here so you can see it very late at night after Mercury retrograde has squared Neptune of the chart, of course. So it could be particularly confusing, miscommunicative, um, you know, projecting, um, projecting situations, sort of all under the moon's trying to Saturn. So it means cooled off. It's um, you know, more like enduring the time with discipline towards what's to come, right? But here's this interesting thing with Mercury retrograde trying Jupiter. An excellent transit for making plans for the future and creating organizational systems as well as for other intellectual and mental efforts. A tendency to really av avoid really difficult mental or intellectual problems, taking the easy way out instead. With the proper sense of discipline, you should be able to overcome these negative effects and make this a day of very creative mental activity. On the more mundane plane, this transit favors all forms of business and commercial activity, an excellent transit under which to sign a contract or conclude a deal. Also, buying and selling should work out very well under this influence. So that could be an interesting indication for you if you would look be looking for such a situation. Uh, it's saying here that these effects do not happen through luck in the usual sense. It opens and sharpens your mind so that you see, even if subliminally, all the possibilities inherent in a situation. This enables you to turn it to your best advantage. Also, this transit gives you a well-founded feeling of optimism, which in turn creates the well-known power of positive thinking. In fact, that is probably the most important reason for the favorableness of this transit. So how can you use a disciplined thinking, um, positive thinking, um, to really set the stage for, for where all this is really going? You know, I know this is eclipse season and Mercury retrograde, so trying to even put a pin on what God is doing in your life is, you know, <laughs> could be is it is certainly challenged in various ways right but the mental scope will be enlarged we can be exposed to more of information than usual and really pick up on where the situation is going at this time and the moon is will immediately make the connection to the new moon or the lunar return for the chart. So the moon will be certainly the most at home at this time as far as the mundane is concerned. Okay, we'll move on to June 10, Thursday. 
So here is the annual solar eclipse. The moon moves past Mercury retrograde. Sun conjoined Mercury retrograde. And we have these aspects to the mundane, and we don't really need to get into that, honestly. I mean, they are what they are if you want to think about them, but... And they, of course, they'll be important. But that Mercury retrograde moving conjunct to the Sun will be purifying the Mercury. In the last video, we talked about how the Mercury retrograde is like a blackening of Mercury. Mercury going through the Sun here will be uh, purifying. But it's interesting that the the solar eclipse picks up so the moon goes through the solar eclipse and then picks up Mercury who has not been Kazemi yet so Merc the moon picks up the not Mercury Kazemi energy if you get my drift and starts to pass it along I think you get what I mean so that Mercury will be purified afterwards after the moon picks up that previous type of energy and I think that Mercury energy at that time will be um, very much, you know, getting so close to being purified of its um, impurity, really. Um, the things that are passing away so that they can reach a higher, higher level. So, interesting to think about that moon. So that moon will be carrying that along into the square to Neptune so you know if it if you're thinking at this time on Thursday isn't exactly clear and you don't exactly know where things are going well Mercury is going to go through this process and it is going to work out towards ordinary business activity by the end of this process right <laughs> and um, the moon is bringing along that light from Mercury into Neptune so I mean the way we're seeing our communication and the way we're interfacing hold tight because I mean it's not gonna stay like that right it's just kind of an illusion of the way things have been it, may, it might be very nostalgic even or like looking back at the past through an idealistic lens but kind of on another level since we have the Mercury Kazemi and um, the solar eclipse right um, on the same day so, hard to really pull it apart exactly, um, but something to think about. Especially towards thinking about where this is all going. Hard to do that right now. Um, especially since what we're talking about is a, a confusion. That's um, what the chart is saying, really. A confusion going somewhere, ultimately. Um, getting purified, getting cleared up. Um, the details will make sense at some point, but they are going through this process, right? They have to be purified. So the way we're seeing things at this point is not clear. Maybe. Although Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun indicates, you know, a very clear mind, the mind being expressed very purely, very um, essentially, in all of its different manifestations our thinking will probably be good at this time it's just maybe the way we're feeling mm, mm, I don't know I don't know I don't know we'll talk about it later we'll see what we'll see what happens okay here's a pretty major thing that I didn't notice until like today um, because Venus or Mars is going into Leo, um, he will be in the 29th degree um, on Thursday and Friday. So, you know, while this does look rather nice, um, whoa, how do we get there? Okay. We'll make mention that the moon is void of course off of Neptune pretty much all of Thursday afternoon. 
while Mars is in the anoretic degree. So um, anoretic degree, 29th degree, very critical degree. Um, the, Mar the Mars is exactly T squared to where he was during June, um, January 6th when um, he was in the anoretic degree of Aries. Um, same natured sign, also a cardinal sign as Mars or as Aries is. So at this moment, it could be very intense, very confusing. Um, be, I think it's just, you know, it's time to sit down and just like, just be aware, <laughs> just be aware and um, let it go and let the process take you where it's meant to take you. You know, we don't have to force where all this stuff is meant to take us really. You know, we can't even, we can't even understand it and it's, um, it's what's changing us, right? <laughs> all right, so, um, but you know, so it could be very intense, very wanting to feel that sense of safety and comfort, willing to defend for that. Um, Mars has been moving off the opposition to Pluto all week as well. So I think after this point, after Mars moves into Leo, you know, we can really be bold and brave and courageous in our drive and what, how we're going to do this thing. We can move out of this um, sort of protecty bubble thing we've been doing with Mars. Um, and so the Mars energy really gets a lot better. Uh, it is kind of weird on Thursday into Friday morning, though, with Mars kind of intense. Um, the way people might want to act all of a sudden. Um, okay, so let's talk about the mundane. So, I mean, the the moon is in Cancer now, applying that trying to Jupiter, right? Very nice, very watery, very flowing... Uh, peacefulness will be something we can tap into maybe with Mars in the anoretic degree it's like these past two weeks three weeks we've had um, these very contradictory indications that have played out in the way they described in the chart um, just today um, and yesterday like I was so upset about something I was really really discouraged um, just having a bad day worrying about some nonsense right um, that's gonna totally get solved when Mercury retrograde this, um, moves on, right? <laughs> right, you know what I mean? You, that that situation, and I ended up just um, the pool was open. I got to go lay out the pool, met some people. It was really, really a good afternoon that I didn't expect. I didn't. It wasn't the the wonderful relaxing and chilling and hanging out with people that I wanted or I expected, but it's the one I got, you know. And this is kind of like that. In a, in a different way um, but Mars trying Sun there on the mundane generally indicates a high energy vigor willingness to work high self-confidence not struggling against others initiating activity physical activity um, really bursting forward with work on projects taking the challenge athletics contest just flowing with the decisive actions, operating with great energy, maintaining a equilibrium, generally favorable for things that Mars Sun contact would be good for. And right on top of that, the very next hour, um, the same 20 minutes later, right? Um, 30. The Sun makes the trine to Jupiter. Um, a very very positive transit it, it it implies a day of good feelings peace and harmony a good time to accomplish something good and useful um, you know we could kind of want we could kind of want to let the day to sort of slip away from us that's what the book's saying but it would be a waste to sort of just sleep through it uh, we can really be we can really buoy things up and protect the inner project that energy into our environment 
to help our affairs. We're going to just be really operating with a great deal of understanding. Um, getting new experiences, new influences, activities, trips. Um, letting go. Just really believe, man. Really believe at this time. It's We're comfy. We're, we're expanding in our beliefs. We know we're going to be moving forward. Um, there's even a, a good connection to Mercury and Pisces here. Mercury and Pisces of the mundane chart um, by the afternoon. So, I mean, buying, selling, business, like moving forward with these business things, this looks pretty interesting for that. Um, and Cancer is known as a financial sign, too. It is. Um, so, you know get on the right side of a, of a business situation, you know, just go, just like take that, that drive and that, the, the energy that's just going to be there at this time from the sun, the moon, um, Jupiter, Mars working together, connecting to Mercury. Um, definitely go with it with the sun connecting to Neptune in that way. You know, it could be a little illusory in a sense, but I think it really is there, you know, the good possible energy is really there on Friday for that stuff. Okay. And the moon is just applying to Venus in the morning here. And um, connecting to the outer planet Uranus here, mm, the moon. So, I mean, you know an easy way to connect it to an unexpected situation with modern technology and currencies and so on for better or worse um, you know be on the right side of it if that's what you're what you're doing I mean there's a lot of opportunity for that here I believe in general could be I don't I don't I try not to do business on the weekend myself but you know it could be um, during the day on Friday definitely a good time and oh man maybe we can actually relax on Saturday here I think there's gonna be a good amount of time that we can relax um, with this uh, time where the moon is in Taurus here and um, definitely when the moon's in cancer this looks like a great moon in cancer transit uh, with Venus there moon there um, you know Neptune there as well I don't like Neptune Meh. You know, I don't really like or not like the planets in general, but I mean, it does make things sort of slide by in a dreamy way with the trying here. So, you know, things with modern technology be working well with the way we're accessing them to as if consume them or um, connect with them in a Venusian way. Uh, okay, it looks like the moon doesn't apply the opposition to Pluto until the morning of Sunday. And they are void, of course, off of that until the early morning when the moon will go into Leo. And then applying the conjunction to Mars. And the sun will make the square to Neptune in the afternoon there. So these Neptune vibes have been coming in, you know, with the sun, you know, our personal energy and the way we're really, like, moving with our energy at this point, um, in the Gemini way, is, like, really, you know, uh, just kind of, a, there's a loser, illusionary situations, you can kind of lose your substance in, so, I mean, uh, I don't, I, I would not be doing, um, much of that by this point, um, I'm probably going to want to let Mercury kind of station and go forward. Mercury is going to gradually, very gradually, start to move forward this next week, right? So, you know, our substance could kind of go through this illusory situation. And, you know, with the moon connecting to Mars there, you know, they're you know it is like he does get like over hot and probably with a connection to mercury right after that 
there will be like um you know like a buy sell situation or a sell buy situation if that makes any sense i i hope it does um i kind of have to figure out exactly where that'll be with how you understand it but you know the moon will hit mars first um you know things get over hot things go down sometimes and then you know there is an opportunity for like some type of trade to happen with the moon in leo so we go into next week but at the same time the moon is facing this opposition to saturn saturn does not like um that saturn does not like what uranus is doing in taurus either we've seen that um so the moon really gets in the middle of that by monday um i think yep and that is the exact uranus square saturn stationary say station retrograde so you know the instability of things could come to a new head a new level a new breakthrough even though um, the structures of things have become more rigid they've become more intense more exacting of us and we're sort of in the middle of that and it's faded and it's connected to the way that the way that we're really interfacing at this time and um, it will be connected to um, in a good way if you want to get a good idea about Mercury election um, when the moon goes into Libra next week right um, Mercury is about to station direct but we do get well not quite gonna station direct just yet but we do get that nice Mercury election with the moon um, next week at some point right that is that is a good thing um, Mercury will be basically debilitated um, in a you know we're, we're seeing at this point like how things are gonna move forward like we've thought about it we're, we're thinking about it we're seeing the plan um, the solstice is coming up Jupiter's about the station retrograde move back into Aquarius so we'll be able to find a type of balance when the moon gets into Libra at that time with our Mercury and um, Venus but hopefully we'll be able to think about that when that comes all right well you all I hope this was helpful I'm glad I was able to make some type of contribution um, I, I really didn't see another time when I was going to be able to do this. I, I am going to be doing um, I don't know all the, a bunch of stuff just came up in my life. So uh, things might look like they're going to be kind of hectic for me uh, this weekend. But I hope things are going well for you. Um, I hope you stay grateful to God and that God will give you wisdom to handle things for the good. Um, I thank you for listening this far if you have. Um, God bless you. I thank you very much, and I will catch you on the next one. God bless.